Hello, in this presentation, we're going to work a problem related to a job cost system. So remember, in a job cost system, we will be working with the production of inventory, and it's usually going to be production of inventory that is not the same in nature. So when we produce things, we often use a process cost system. First, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube shopping affiliate program, but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and use ourselves. Acer 27 inch monitor. I've been using an Acer monitor as my primary monitor for a few years now. This is the first Acer monitor that I have used after having used a series of different brands of monitors in the past. The Acer monitor has been performing well and I'm trusting the Acer brand more and more as I use the monitor. I have a 27 inch monitor, which I think is ideal for what I do, which is of course the screen recording and the editing. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials or a job cost system, we would generally use a job cost system when the things that we produce are not the same in nature. And also, unlike a merchandising company where we're just going to buy stuff and then we sell stuff, in the manufacturing company, what's happening is that we are creating the stuff. So we're actually making the stuff, the inventory being the stuff. So we're making, we're buying the raw material, we're processing that raw material, then we have the finished good, then we sell the finished good. So we need to track that process as we go. We're assuming that these finished, these items are not the same in nature. Uh, sometimes it's, you, we can think about like a construction company doing jobs. Uh, if we're a tiling kitchens and whatnot, we might tile one kitchen that's a lot larger than the other kitchen. And therefore, uh, we have this problem of how do we allocate things to the jobs, such as overhead when the jobs are different sizes. So those are the types of things we're going to talk about and we are going to use this information we're going to post journal entries into the blue area here we're going to then um, we're going to record the journal entries in the blue area then we'll post the journal entries to the general ledger over here so here's the general ledger it has every account that we will be using uh, starting with cash assets in green and then the liabilities and the equity accounts and over here and the income and the expenses we will then, uh, once we post things, everything to the general ledger, then it will automatically populate the trial balance over here. So for example, uh, this number is coming from that number on the general ledger. And that is the case all the way through here. So we'll be able to see what is happening as we go through this problem. And note that the new thing is that we are also going to have to track this number uh, the work in process, not just by the general ledger, which will be right here. That ties out. That's the same number. The general ledger is by date, but we also want to track it by job. So you can compare that similar to the accounts receivable account. The accounts receivable account, we have 180,000 in it. If we look at the activity in the general ledger, we can see the activity by date. But in that uh, account, we also want to track it by who owes us money. So we want to list that 180 by client. Well, the similar kind of notion is going to be by the work in process. Work in process represents what has what is going on or what is in process at this given point in time in terms of inventory, where we have these inventory accounts, raw materials. Uh, that's what we paid for it. So that it, it kind of is what it is. The work in process is is what is we're working on. And then we're going to transfer that to finished goods. So we're going to have to back up this work in process. If we go over here, that's all the way over here in our job cost system. So our job cost system is backing that up by job. So we have these three jobs. They're not the same. You can think of them as like a construction company where we're working on a job or, or we are creating something, creating, making inventory. We've got job 14, job 15, job 16. And if we add the totals up, the 41, the 42, and the zero, they add up to this 83, as we can see here. 
And that ties out, of course, to the 83 that we just saw on the general ledger and the trial balance. Now, when we think about us creating inventory, we got to get in our heads that uh, the inventory that we're making, what we're creating, it consists of the raw materials, whatever we're using to put into the inventory. That's the most obvious piece of the ending product. But remember that it also includes direct labor. So obviously, one uh, for many types of things we make, the largest piece of it is oftentimes the labor so how much how much does it cost for the labor that's basically a salary so notice now we're not going to expense the salary for direct labor when the uh, employees are working we're going to put that into the cost of the inventory and expense it when we sell the inventory and then factory overhead is anything that we cannot apply to the job so the problem with factory overhead is that we do not know which job you apply it to because either it's too small for us to to uh, take the time to apply it or it's something that's indirect such as the rent on the warehouse or something like that uh, therefore we're gonna have to find some way to apply it to the job and we'll talk about how we're gonna handle that as we go so just keep in mind whenever we're making something if we're producing something whether it be a job cost or a process cost we're gonna have three factors in production that are included in the inventory that's going to be direct materials, direct labor, and overhead. And we're also going to have basically three inventory accounts to deal with. That's going to be raw materials, work in process, finished goods. And then we're obviously going to sell it from that point. And then that's when we expense it in the form of cost of goods sold. All right. So let's first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to hide a few of these cells because, because I want to work with just part of the cells and have everything as close together as possible. So I'm going to hide cells G to K. So I'm going to put my cursor on G. So you see the drop down, left click, highlight over to K, which is that little skinny one, let go. And then uh, right click on the selected area and hide that information. All right, so now we have what we're going to do here. We're going to post it into this area, and then we're going to have to record it over here on the general ledger. All right, so we're going to start off on 1-1, where we purchase raw materials on account. So I'm going to go through our series of questions as we go through this. This is going to be a fairly basic uh, start off. There's nothing uh, too unusual on this one. We're going to say, is cash affected? No, we didn't buy it with cash. We bought it on accounts. So we bought it basically with credit. So that's going to be the uh, payable account. We may want to think about what we received, however, first in order to decide whether we should debit or credit the payable. So what did we buy? Raw materials. So if we look through here, we can see raw materials is, is up here. It's an asset. It's kind of basically part of inventory. So we're basically buying the raw materials that we are going to use to make our inventory. Uh, it's an asset. It has a debit balance. We got more of it. Therefore, we're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it as what it is, which is another debit. So I'm going to debit this account. I'm going to right click on it, copy it going to put it in C4, right click and paste one, two, three, just the values. We're going to debit the uh, raw materials. We're going to put the debits on top. Of course, we're going to debit it for 400,000. If we debit something, we're also going to have to credit something. And that credit will, of course, be the accounts payable. I'm going to represent credits with a negative 400,000 for this worksheet. So it's in this case, it's in a credit column. However, it's also represented with a uh, negative number. So keep that in mind. That's going to go to the accounts payable. We can see that the accounts payable has a credit balance. Does it make sense that we are crediting it? Well, accounts payable has a credit balance. We need to make it go up because we owe more money. Therefore, we're going to do the same thing to it as what it is, which in this case is another credit. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put that in C5, right click and paste it one, two, three. Okay, so now I'm going to post this to the general ledger. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller to do that. I'm going to put the, the minimize button, bring it down to around 80, and then scroll over here so we can see the accounts payable at the same time. So remember the general ledger, this is called posting, is in the same order, meaning we have assets in green, and then the liabilities. We only have this liability over here being the one liability. So if we're going to post raw materials, raw materials is here. Raw materials is the third account on the trial balance. Raw materials is the third account on the general ledger. We are in the debit column, so I'm going to be on the debit side of the raw materials in Q23. I'm going to post it with formula, so I'm going to say equals and point to that 400,000. That should bring, bring this number up when we hit enter, and it should also affect the uh, trial balance. So here's the 550, here's the 550, we're out of balance by the 400. Now I'm going to post the accounts payable. So here's the accounts payable here. It's our first orange account and only orange account because it's a liability. Therefore, it's going to be over here on the general ledger. We're going to post it in the credit side because it says credit. 
we're just going to say equals and then point to that 400,000 and enter. So that brings our balance to 445. 445 puts us back in balance like so. All right, let's take a look at the next transaction. Let's scroll back over here. Going to make it a little bit larger again, back up to 100%. And we are now on 1.7, which says direct materials transferred from raw materials to a job. So now we're going to transfer that raw material to a job. So we're basically saying, hey, the, the job is requisitioning this raw material. Raw materials is now going from the stockhouse, whatever in the corner or the warehouse to uh, particular jobs. So the jobs here, I'm going to just, we're going to allocate it to these three jobs based on this information and uh, therefore what will the journal entry be well we know raw materials is affected it's going from raw materials in this case to the work in process so and why is it going to the work in process because anytime we affect a job the jobs mean work in process that the jobs are work in process so we're going to post it to work in process in the journal entry then we're going to back it up in this format with um the job sheets so we know that the uh, raw materials is going down because we are now moving it out of raw materials raw materials has a debit balance we need to make it go down so we're going to do the opposite thing to it which in this case would be a credit so i'm going to copy raw materials we're going to put that on the bottom because credits go in the bottom so here's the date i'm putting it on the bottom right clicking pasting one two three i'm going to put it in the credit column and we've got three numbers here so i'm going to put the i'm going to add those up i'm going to say negative and then add them up. I'm going to put brackets around it and put 100,000 plus 170,000 plus 80,000 brackets and enter. So it's 350. Now, why do I put brackets around it like this? You can see in the formula bar that it's up here. It, obviously, if I want to add them up and then flip the sign to make it a negative number, and if I just put a negative before the 100,000, then it, it would be a negative 100 plus the 170 and we'd come up with a negative number. So what we're going to tell it to do in order of operations is add up these three numbers, brackets, and then take that sum and make it and flip the sign on it. It's basically what we're doing there. So we're going to have to do the same thing. Uh, if we credit something for 350, we're obviously going to have to debit something for 350. So I'm going to say negative of this number. I want the debit. I want that number. But flip the sign. And that number will, of course, go to the work in process. So we're moving it from raw materials to the stuff we're working on work in process has a debit balance we're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it which is another debit so i'm going to copy that we're going to put that on top in c7 right click and paste one two three all right i'm going to bring it back down to 80 percent down here we're going to scroll back over on this side and we're going to post the work in process so here's the work in process and here's the work in process it's the fourth account so we're going to scroll over here to work in process fourth account on the general ledger this is called posting and we are in u9 so in u9 we're going to select equal and point to the 350 over here that's going to bring the 83 up in the debit direction to 433 which we can also see on the trial balance we're out of balance of course now by the 350. now we're going to post the raw material here it is here we're going to post it here so it's the third account. So here's raw materials down here. We are in the credit section this time because we're going to bring raw materials down. We are in R24 equals the 350. Therefore, the, the 550 is going to go down to 200. We can see that 200 here. We're back in balance here. Now, we've affected the work in process. Now, whenever something happens to the work in process, we want to break that out by job as well. So we're also going to have to break this out by job. So we'll scroll over here to the job sheet. So here's the job sheet over here. Remember, we have our three jobs. And the data then said that we broke this out in terms of the three jobs on 1-7. We are in the direct materials column. And we transferred 100,000 of that 350 to uh, job 14. And that's going to bring our total up. So notice we have what was in there before in terms of direct materials, the direct labor overhead. Plus the 100 brings us to, to 144 total. Then we're going to do the same thing for job 15 on 17. We transferred in materials of uh, 170,000. So that's going to bring our balance up, our total materials, uh, total direct labor and overhead. We're now at 212. And then for job 16, uh, we have on 17, 
what was transferred in was 80,000. So now if we sum those up, they add up to the 433, which ties out to what was on our uh, work in process in the general ledger and the trial balance. And if I click on this and I hold down control, I can click here and here highlight those three cells and see that it also sums up to that 350. So the 350 was the journal entry. The 433 is the total of our jobs now. That total will also be seen on the work in process account here in the general ledger. It will also be seen on the trial balance here in work in process. All right, let's move to the next transaction here. We're going to bring it back up to 100%. Scrolling up, moving over. We are going to skip a line. We're now on 112. So now we have direct labor paid. So this is going to be direct labor on the job again. So now the thing with direct labor, well, what's the first thing? Is cash affected? Is cash affected? We're going to say yes in this case. And in this case, we're going to assume that we're paying cash. We're going to simplify the payroll process because we're going to focus in on <laughs> the work in process. So we're going to assume we paid cash here. So cash has a debit balance. We're going to make it go down because we we paid cash to the uh, employees. Therefore, we're going to do the opposite thing to it as what it is. That's a debit. We're going to credit it to make it go down. So I'm going to copy cash. I'm going to put it on the bottom of the date. Right click and paste it. One, two, three. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add them up. So in order to add them up and flip the sign, make it a negative number. I'm going to say negative of brackets, the 30,000 plus.